This video will explain some of the um, real-world applications of price elasticity of demand. The first real-world or real-life application of price elasticity of demand is how it affects pricing decisions by businesses. Um, firms will usually uh, calculate the price elasticity of demand of their products and this helps them make their pricing decisions and it particularly helps in predicting the effects of a change of price on total revenue. Basically, total revenue is how much the firm gains from selling its output. So it's basically price times quantity. If you sell 100 cars and each car is worth a million dollars, you earn a hundred million dollars. Uh, now, when demand is price inelastic, that means that the percentage change in quantity demanded will be less than the percentage change in price. So if you know that the demand for your product is price inelastic and you want to increase your total revenue, this will happen when you raise the price. So total revenue will increase when price rises. And if price falls, total revenue will decrease. So knowledge of price elasticity of demand helps firms make those pricing decisions. Now, in the case of unit elastic demand, total revenue does not change because the percentage change in quantity will always be equal to the percentage change in price. Total revenue will not change um, whether price rises or falls. What about the case of price elastic demand? Now, demand is price elastic when the percentage change in quantity is greater or bigger than the percentage change in price. Here, the opposite, it will be opposite to price inelastic demand. Total revenue will rise when price falls because any drop in price will cause a much larger increase, a significant increase in quantity demanded. So if you want to raise your total revenue, this will happen by lowering your price. And if the price happens to rise, this will drastically lower your total revenue. Um, and this is why um, a lot of clothes manufacturers and a lot of um, fashion stores have sales at the end of the season because at the end of the season, uh, the demand for your product is quite uh, price elastic. These clothes are already at the end of the season. Therefore, by dropping the price, by having a, a sales discount, this will drastically increase your total revenue. The second real-world application of price elasticity of demand is how it relates to primary commodities versus manufactured products. So basically, primary commodities are commodities that arise from the use of natural resources. So agricultural products, um, fishing, the products of the forestry industry, uh, cotton, rubber, all of these products that arise from the use of natural resources um, are primary commodities, while manufactured products are products that are produced um, by manufacturing industries. So primary commodities often have rather inelastic demand, and the reasons for that are um, usually they can be classed as necessities. This is number one. They can be classed as necessities. Number two, they often don't have many close substitutes. And number three, they are usually cheap. Not always, but they're usually cheap. All these contribute to the demand for primary commodities being rather inelastic. On the other um, opposite end of the spectrum, uh, manufactured products are often classed as luxuries. Remember, not always, but they are often classed as luxuries. They often have many close substitutes, you know, a laptop or an MP3 player. There are many close substitutes. And they usually take a big proportion of income, even if it's just a one-off, one-time purchase. All of these reasons contribute to the demand for manufactured products being rather price elastic. So, primary commodities often have price inelastic demand. Manufactured products often have price elastic demand. The last real-world application we're going to look at um, for price elasticity of demand is how it affects government decisions when it comes to imposing indirect taxes. Remember, indirect taxes are taxes that are imposed on businesses. They are taxes that are imposed on goods and services. They are not taxes imposed on income. Now, when 
the product has elastic demand, we know that the percentage change in quantity will be greater than the percentage change in price. That means if you impose an indirect tax and it raises the price, which it will, because businesses will pass on that extra cost to the consumers, that could increase unemployment. This is number one. Number two, because the quantity demanded will drop significantly, it won't raise a lot of tax revenue. So it's not always a good idea for governments to tax products that have elastic demand. However, Products that have inelastic demand, the percentage change in quantity will always be less than the percentage change in price. This won't affect demand as much, so the firms, the businesses that have to pay the indirect tax, can just pass on that tax to the consumer in the form of a price rise, and this will raise much more tax revenue. And this is another reason why governments often tax products that have inelastic demand. Products like um, cigarettes, for example, are a perfect example. Cigarettes have rather inelastic demand, consumers of cigarettes will continue to buy cigarettes. The firms that produce cigarettes can pass on these taxes to consumers in the form of higher prices and it will generate um, enough government revenue, uh, government tax revenue for the government.